little segment of it was about how Abram and Sarah heard the angel of the Lord says, hey, you're going to have a baby in a year. <laughs> and they both laughed. You know, sometimes it takes time. And Abram, well, he got a little ahead of God's will. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell, tell you a quick story, but not, not to edify myself, but to give you a thought of the way I believe sometimes, I believe sometimes this is the way it works. When I was, um, I graduated high school, I was 17, I graduated high school, moved to Houston, and I was there about three or four weeks, five weeks, something like that, and um, my cousin worked in the same company I worked for, and uh, we, I got off a little early, and he says, hey, you want to ride with me? We're gonna, I'm going to make one more delivery, and so I punched out, I was off the clock, and um, I went and got in the truck, and we was driving up 290, and we took uh, one of those side roads, I forget which one exactly, I can put looking on the map, took a left, going down there, it was raining, and around one of those big bends, we was doing about 55, 60 miles an hour, and the little little Toyota pickup started sliding sideways, and a Frito-Lay truck hit right there on my side of the truck, and um, crushed three vertebrae in my back, uh, my head, skull fracture, a lot of stuff, so anyway, um, at first they said I was going to die, so people prayed, God worked. And that was a miracle. Then the uh, doctors and everybody says, oh, he won't ever be able to pick up anything more than a pencil. And, uh, or do, you know, they, all these limitations. And I was, to be honest with you, at that point, I honestly don't remember any of that because I was, I, skull fractures and stuff and I forgot. But um, long story short, when I began to realize, when I came to the, the ability to cognitively think about my situation, their options were, you know, take these pills for all this pain that you're having, because I had a lot of pain. And, and I wasn't really a godly person, and I'm not trying to say I was. I don't think that's what it takes. But in the midst of that, you call it hard-headed or whatever, probably a little bit of hard-headed and a little bit of God having a plan that I didn't see. Because I'm telling you this miracle now when I wasn't even living for God. So I think God can work through things of our past, right? So for nine years, they kept offering me. I'd go to the doctor. My back was messed up. I have all kinds of problems. I'd go to the doctor and they'd say, well, here's this prescription. Here's this bag of pills, <laughs> literally grocery bags of pills one time. I'm like, oh my word. And I looked around the world and I saw people addicted to all kinds of stuff. I'm like, they lost their mind. I ain't taking nothing. I'll get through this. I believe God can heal me. And that was my mindset. I believe God can heal me. He did. He did. Nine years later. Nine years of pain. Nine years of very, very, very hard, intense pain. I'd go to the chiropractor, I would, I'd literally, I'd get my wife to, <laughs> remember those days, I'd lay down and I'd get my wife to walk on my back. <laughs> I, would, I mean, I would get I, I, anything to get me some relief, but God healed me. And it healed me in the middle of a church service. It wasn't because I was up there praying, you know, I need prayer again, I need prayer again, and I did go to prayer a lot, but he healed me when I was sitting over here just worshiping the Lord. And, uh. I don't remember exactly when it happened. I was, I was literally, I had this problem. And I, don't, I quit, can't explain the physiological things of it. But I just know that if I pulled my right arm over really hard like this and held it, it would give me a little bit of relief, you know, just something about that twisting that back or whatever. And um, they, you know, Pentecostal church, let's stand, let's sit, let's stand, let's sit. And, of course, our church is a lot less active than our church back home. When I grew up, and it was like, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise, and all I could do was, all I would do is this right here. I'd go, praise the Lord. And say, let's, let's lift our hands and give God glory, Lord. Because I didn't want to let go of my pain. And, but sometimes you're in that service. And what I'm trying to explain to you today, and I'm not preaching right now, but I'm trying to help you to understand. God is not limited. It's us that's got the problem. <laughs> and us that hinders him because we're impatient. We want that Isaac, and all we want to do is get that Ishmael. 
We won't go into that right now. But my point is, dear God, help us to endure and, and get through some things so we can truly say, God healed me. God did that. God did that. 35 years of marriage, I can't tell you enough. I, I, man, my wife, I, I, every once in a while, I'll send her a song. You know, love songs. Uh, not, not praise and worship songs, believe it or not. But uh, I'll send her a love song. And uh, when I'm mad, I send her, no, I'm just kidding. Not really. <laughs> Rap, <laughs> you know. But, uh, but, <laughs> but I, I just want to say, um, 35 years today, it, it's, it's one of the top. I'll tell you what, let me do it to you this way. Living for God is 1A. Who you marry is 1B. Because if you marry the wrong one, you're going to be struggling for living for God. That's just the way it is. And I thank God that she, she stuck with me for several years. I lived like the devil. I acted like the devil. And uh, she kept, she prayed. If you, some of you don't know what's going on, you need to wake up. She prayed, God, whatever it takes, save my husband. God, whatever it takes. And she actually prayed, if I'm going to be specific, God, just get him to come to church. Is that right? Just get him to church. Get him to come to church. Get him. Yeah. Without complaining. <laughs> She'd have never dreamed that this day would be here. 35 years later. Surrounded by grandkids. Surrounded by beautiful people. Thank you all for honoring us. And I'm, I'm, I'm taking much, too much time. But have faith in God. He can heal your marriage. He can heal your body. He can take care of that job situation. If you'll just quit complaining, quit complaining, quit whining and crying. I'm not trying to tell you you can't say something to somebody, but don't let that be your, the, the picture of your life. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to get through this. Let that be the mind. Amen. I can't escape the responsibility I have to this church. Um, God has obviously given me a, a responsibility, but he's also given me a message. I want to turn to 1 Corinthians 3. And again, I want to encourage you to go uh, back and watch uh, the Bible study this morning. And one other thing, if you're not, I found the mistake today we made. If you're not getting our church text, I sent one out yesterday noon. Uh, if you're not getting those texts, we need to know. Is anybody not getting those texts? We've corrected one this morning. Anybody? All right, everybody getting them? Raise your hand if you're not. Okay. So if you're not getting them, we use that for an emergency or for announcements, so don't, don't let us neglect uh, that. I want to remind you while you're turning your Bible to 1 Corinthians 3, um, our care teams are, are working diligently. I know that I saw yesterday where they filled up a deep freeze full of food for the future and for elders and people hurting and all that, and I want to say thank you to them. Um, we, we can't just be a spiritual body that meets and pats each other on the back. We must go into our world, go into our community with truth and love and, and hope and showing people that there is people in, this, in the church that loves them. Amen? Yep. And so I want to just say right now, since Tiffany, wherever she's at, she's... My goodness, she's... she's uh, I see her head bop up every once in a while. She's got some kid back there. Get back down here. Not early. Anyway, uh, so... Just, I want to say thank you to her and all those ladies, her for organizing it, and all those ladies that worked so diligently yesterday and on Friday. Thank you. I also want to say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I also want to say thank you to our SALT, our college ministry on campus. Woo! Yeah, she goes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they yesterday they hosted an event on campus. And uh, I, my wife and I, Brother Haley, was went, went, and several of the young college students and, and some of the leaders were there. And what? Oh, I just, the, the day will come, and I know we can't imagine it because we're not there, but the day will come where I will, fl not, not fall, what do you call that? Slip off. I will, I will ease out of, ooh, look at me. It's not about me, but it will, you won't see me. But I believe that you'll see these college students that are grounding their faith on a college campus in the Lord, grounding it today, I believe you'll see them uh, leading a, ch a powerful, powerful church living for God. I believe that with all my heart. I'm thankful for them. And uh, I, I just do want to say thank you to those that give them an opportunity to serve. So I'll shut up now. Um, oh, no one more thing. <laughs> our, our funds for the alt uh, not altar platform 
as we've got this done, we've got the carpet done, and I'm being, I, you, don't know, I, you know I never say anything about money, but when we took uh, pledges to give to this, unfortunately a lot of people quit giving their tithe and offering, which I don't quite understand that, but I'm just asking you, be faithful. Don't, don't say, well, I'm, I give to the, to the platform. The platform's nothing. We need to keep our, our faith promises and our, our uh, uh, missions and, and the, the, the care team. The care team is almost out of money because we haven't been given to it. So I'm, 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 not trying to be, I'm not trying to spank anybody. I just want you to understand, if you said, hey, I'm going to give to the platform or, or to the remodel or whatever, let it be a, a, over and above. Let it be a sacrifice. Amen. Okay, now I'll get to 1 Corinthians. Did I say 1 Corinthians 3 yet? <sighs> Amen. Let's go there. Verse, verse 11, uh, 1 Corinthians 3. I know your knees are about to buckle. Amen. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built upon, thereupon he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Complicated verse. I'm going to try to explain it. Hopefully I get to the end of these notes. Uh, I, I'm, I'm much more of a, a writer than I'm, I'm a talker most of the time. Sometimes I've you know, whatever, but, but I, I want to make sure that I'm right with the Lord and I deliver what I believe God gave me uh, in the last few days. Lord, I pray that you would help us uh, touch our minds and our hearts. Give us, Lord God, a desire to, to build upon you, upon your word, upon your spirit, Lord God. The work you have done, I pray that you would help us to, to recognize and realize the purpose that you've done in our lives. I pray that you would anoint us, anoint our ears that we might hear, and our hearts, Lord God, our hands and our feet, that we might do your work. I pray in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. Woo! Turn to your neighbor. Give him a high five before you sit down. That way you can say, hey, I saw somebody at church today. Turn to your neighbor. You're not turning your neighbor. Some of you are like, I, why didn't they turn to me? Why didn't you turn to them? Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Such a good report I got this morning from little Ezra. If you saw that baby the other day, I think I sent a picture out. Or, my, or I'd give it to my wife. My wife sent it out. That baby had all kinds of gizmos hooked up to it. But they have started taking him off. And then today they said, this boy is strong. And so he is a, he is a, a strong-willed baby because... Uh, when I was there in the hospital, they said, we're going to give him, um, what do they call it, sedative, where they make him go to sleep? And they gave him the dose that it registered for his body and weight and stuff, and it didn't work. They had to give him more and more and more. Finally, finally he comped out where they could take care of him, but it was such a strong will, little baby. I'm so thankful. So, so let, me, let me go to a construction um, perspective for a minute. Every house is built on a foundation. Every house. We've seen in my, I grew up in East Texas, and I'm sure it's different in other places. I've been to uh, Israel. I've been to other countries, and it's built differently. But we've all seen uh, a variety, or most of us have seen a variety of the way houses are built. And uh, I've used the example one time when I grew up on a chicken farm over in East Texas, and across the road, I'd go out there and go fishing at this old hole, in the, and I'd catch crappie. Man, big old crappie. But anyway, I'm sorry, but uh, I, I miss crappie fishing in that little hole. But I'd go over there, and there was this old house that was leaning over, an old rock, old log house, if you will, kind of had some things added to it, so it didn't quite look so archaic as 19 or 1750s, but, but it was built on just, they just built that house on big old... Uh, uh, iron rocks that they just pulled out of the ground and they kind of set them up there and they built that house and of course that house had fallen down we've seen uh, my wife and I lived when we after we got married we lived uh, well we lived in a lot of places but, uh, but uh, we lived in a house that was built in like 1912 or 1915 and it was it was a pier and beam house y'all know what I'm talking about when I say pier and beam it has the the rocks that go down to the the ground and then it has the beams that go across them and and um, one time that house is very interesting because it was always shifting and I was always having to get under the house and, and re-level it. Anybody ever live in a house like that? You know what I'm talking about. You're having to re-level the house. And I did, it was too cheap and didn't have enough money, so I'd level it myself. And a few weeks later, because I, I didn't pay for it, <laughs> I was back down there, there leveling again. And one time this house had been built so, onto so many times, I never really cared to get all under it because it was like five different parts. And one time while we were living there, 
uh, the back of the house started dropping down where the washer and dryer and everything was. And so I said, well, I'll get under there and I'll level it. And I got under there and took my jacket and crawled under there. I was a little bit skinnier then. And uh, I got under there and, I, and I'm like, there's a hole here. And I got to looking and they had covered up. They had built the house on top of a well. And I threw a rock down there and splash. I'm like, oh my word, no wonder this house is shifting. It wasn't built on a, uh, a foundation the way we look at it today. It was built on a pier and beam foundation. So it worked, it worked. And, 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 but in the world of construction, you have many options on how you can build. We can choose uh, any way of building we want to. Pier and beam, if you want to get it done, get it done tomorrow, get after it, pier and beam. If you want to build a good solid foundation, though, you're going to have to put some thought into it and some engineering into it. And, and in, in the spiritual world, the religious world, if you will, the, the world of salvation and hope and peace and, and miracles, the world of, of joy, joy unspeakable, the, the world of, of uh, uh, God is on my side, that world, that spiritual world, we, we can also choose how we build, but there is only one foundation. You don't get to choose your foundation when it comes to your spiritual life. You might say, I'm going to choose another foundation, but the one that matters, the one that works, the one that is eternal is founded upon, the, the scripture says, the apostles and prophets and Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. So everything that we build in the spirit must be based upon that foundation. Everybody say amen. Got it? Okay. So except for the intimidation of some people, except for some religions, if you will, Hinduism and, and, and Catholicism and Islam and so many, so many others, uh, no one is going, including God, is going to make you build on a certain foundation. We are, uh, many of us are maybe first, second, third, fourth generation apostolic, and so we have made up our mind we're going to build on this foundation, and, and that's all well and good. But when it comes down to it, you college students or these young people that are here with me, they can, they can say, you know what, I don't want to build my life on the house, on the, on the work of God. I just, that's not my desire. I don't want to live with that under my life. And, and, and that's very unfortunate. But uh, God's will and God's way, and, and, and I'm not trying to pick on any, in, any particular uh, religion, but God's will and God's way, if there is one God, if there is a God that judges all people, He has one standard that He judges everybody by. And if we don't recognize the importance of the foundation, we will not, we will not include that in our lives. Now, I was, I was one of them early, and, and I've said earlier about my marriage, I was one of them that early on in my life, I built on a, 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 sand, a foundation of sand. I built on a, a shaky foundation. I built on that pier and beam with those old rocks out there. And, and if I would have stayed on that, I'm telling you, there's, there's, there's no question in my mind that I, my house would not have endured the 35 years. My house would not have endured the, the 22 years of, of pastor in this church. But I, I had a change of mind and a change of heart, and you can too. Some of you that are building on sand or the, or the promises of this world or the things of, of, that matter what, to, to the world, you're going to find yourself with this conundrum saying, well, I've been building my life on this foundation of, of, of success and of greed and of, of hope in, in this world, and, and I'm, I'm building my life on the, on the dependency of other people, of pleasing other people. But I know that if I'm going to live for God, I've got to change my life from this foundation to another foundation. I've got to get off of this sand and onto the rock of God. And, and of course, uh, we, we wonder how that's done. We, it would be like, uh, and I'd go back to this morning's Bible study, this, you know, Sarah, you're going to have a 90 years old, you know, 100 years old, Abram, y'all going to have a baby. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm telling you that if God, if you really want to reconstruct your life, he can do it. If you want to change the way you live life, you can do it. If you want to change the direction of your life, he can do it. But you're going to have to have a change of mind and a change of foundations. Because there is only, and I, I'm, I'm just telling you, not a salesman, there is only one foundation that will work. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. In the kingdom of God, in the spiritual world, 
There's only one type of foundation. There is, there is only one foundation from, for the engineer of heaven. The engineer, we had, anybody get to see the, uh, the apocalypse yesterday? That was not apocalypse. <laughs> that's funny. That was an accident, but that's funny. The eclipse. <laughs> you can see that eclipse. Uh, we got the glasses out there. I took pictures of it. And uh, it, was, it was just, it was the coolest thing to see the eclipse. God did that. They didn't run into each other. The sun and the moon did not hit each other and explode in the sky. Isn't it crazy? The, 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 the galaxies, the God of the universe, the God of the Milky Way and the whatever galaxies beyond that, that God created everything and he said for humanity there is one foundation. Now all throughout history, and we know this not only from biblical knowledge, but from, from uh, history lessons. Throughout history, there have been men and women that come along and says, Oh, but I've got another foundation that will work. Everybody remember David Koresh and some of these other weirdos. You, 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 you think they're weird. You ought to get into some of the Mormonism and some of the Islam and all the things like that. They, I had a dream, and so therefore follow me. It's a new foundation. It's better than the one that God created. It's all just words and, and it's emptiness because in the end of time, when we're coming to that, by the way, but in the end of time, all of these things will be tested and every foundation will be found. Every foundation will be found faulty except for the one that is in Jesus Christ. Every foundation will be failing. Now, this is, this is, where, this is where it gets a little complicated because uh, we, God prophesied through Isaiah, and I want to build this just a minute and then I'll go into us personally. God prophesied through Isaiah about this foundation. In Isaiah 28 and 16, he said, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone. He was projecting, looking way out there, 2,000 years, whatever it was, later, saying, I've got a cornerstone. I've got, I'm going to have a Savior born unto men that if they would build their lives on him. Scripture says, It is a sure foundation and he that believeth shall not make haste in other words they're not going to shift they're not going to move away that word they uh, obviously king james doesn't always translate perfectly but that's that's what it means he said they're not going to be shifted in times of trouble because it's a sure foundation that foundation is still a sure foundation you that are in this building today, I, I can't tell the whole world, I wish I could, but you that are in this building that are struggling with life and struggling with marriage and struggling with, with the things of life, I'm telling you, if you would reallocate your energy to getting onto the foundation of Jesus Christ, you would find that God can and will help you. He's a sure help and He's a sure foundation. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20 in verse uh, 20 through 22, let me just read uh, 21st. And, and are built upon the foundation, speaks plain, the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. He includes in whom all the building fitly framed together grows. That's us. We talk about coming to church. It was spoken again. I, I keep going back to this. It was just hand in glove today. The, the family. You need to know your father. You need to know your family. You need to know who you're dealing with. I, I know who, who I can trust. I had to, I had to give a, a letter of reference to someone this, this week for a job. And, I, and I'm like, you know, this is somebody I'd trust my grandkids to. You don't know them, you won't do that. Come on. You don't know who you can trust. You don't know who you can depend on. And so it's good for you to, to come into the house of God. But he says, in whom all the building fitly framed together, the church unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are building together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. It is God's will that we not only be on the foundation, but that we build a house that is full of His Spirit. Okay, so here we go. This is, this is why do we build a foundation if we don't build a structure on top of it? Why would we have a foundation if there wasn't something to set on top of it? There's, it's, it's illogical. That's not the, but the Lord is telling us He is the foundation and we get to build on it. He is the foundation and we build, as the scripture said earlier, with wood, hay, stubble. No, not me. 
I'm going to build with rock and stone, gold and precious things. I'm going to build the house, my house, on top of the word of God, upon top of the spirit of God, upon the name of Jesus. I'm going to build my house with something that will endure the troubles and the trials that's coming before me. And I don't know what's coming in for me. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not God. I don't know. I don't, I don't have, I don't have a, 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 what do they call them, balls. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't have anything like that. But I do have the Word of God. And what I know is that the Word of God tells me that there is coming a time when the day, the day, the Scripture used the word the day, that that day that we will be tested by fire. Now some of us are not too comfortable with what we see going on around us. And we're, we're fearful and we're scared. And, and I, I, can, I can somewhat understand why. But I want to make sure that you understand this and it's very important. If, you, if your house, if your life is built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ and you have put in the effort and the time and the sacrifice to put in, uh, to build your house, if you will, with stone and with steel, with things that are precious, then when the troubles come and that fire is going to come, then you will be tested. Yes, you'll be tested, but surely it will stand because it is built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ with good material. You choose. You choose. You choose. Let, let's look at the building the building material that we can use to build this house. Firstly, of course, we can easily look at relationships. We can look at our relationships and say, hey, I'm going to use this relationship to build my house. And, and thankfully, thank God that I was blessed with a good relationship with my, my, my parents and grandparents and my, my wife and now our children. And, and that's, it's part of my house. It's part of my house. And, and even though some of my family may not be in the church, but the, but the ones that are is the ones I lean on, the ones I depend on. They're the beams. They're the ones that I really said, hey, this is going to be, this is somebody I can trust. And then we go into things like work and, and in careers and education. And you put, you put faith in those things. And because it's natural and it's okay because we look around us and the, the economy of the world, the economies of the world are based upon us doing diligent work so we can receive a good pay. And then we take that pay and we build our, our physical homes or we rent them or whatever else. But we build our home with things like this. And what the Lord is trying to uh, show us and when, what I'm trying to show us as well is that there is a fire, a day of fire coming. There is a day of trial. There is a day of, of, of trouble coming upon this world. I'm going to tell you now that this thing that we see going on in Israel is, is not the end. It is just the beginning. I pray to God that you understand what I'm saying. I'm not trying to... This is not fear. This is, In fact, we should rejoice when that day comes. We should look up and say, Lord, this is an awesome day. I've got so many things going through my mind. We, we need to recognize that this day is a day of great rejoicing because our Father, our God in heaven draws nigh. But we're in the flesh. We're in the flesh. And we, we live in houses and we put on shoes and we go to jobs. But in the deep core of our lives, all of those things are, are shifty. All those things are on shaking ground, so to speak. There's, there might not be a job, but if I have my relationship with Jesus Christ right, if my true home is built upon the foundation of the prophets and the apostles. If I, and that, by the way, the foundation of the prophets and apostles is the word. Jesus Christ being, and I'm trying to help you with maybe a construction terminology here, but, but Jesus Christ is the, is the chief cornerstone. And if, for those of, I'm going to do a quick lesson, if you will. For those of you that don't know construction, in, in the past, the chief cornerstone was the cornerstone that everything was measured off of. It was from this corner to that corner, from that corner to that corner, from this corner to this corner, and everything flowed based upon this corner. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. The prophets and the apostles are the foundation, and Jesus Christ is the one that everything is measured by. Don't don't get your eyes and your mind upon the things of this world. They're shifting. They're always changing. This thing in Israel might not, it might not be the same five weeks from now or, or five days from now. Who knows? Yeah. 
But I know one thing. There's something else coming. If it ain't COVID, it's going to be Ukraine. Oh, Magog and Magog. Oh, yep, it might be. Oh, now Israel. Yep, that too. What else is coming next? I don't know. But I know this. My house is not built upon fear. My house is not built upon shaking things. My house is not built, and I'm trying to encourage you to make, take an inventory of your own home. Look at the, the way you have built, because the way you have built matters. Because there is coming a day, a trial, a test, a fire, whatever you want to call it, and it will test what you have relied upon, Amen. what you have depended upon. Jesus told the crowd that followed him in Matthew 7 and 24, he said, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken that person to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And he, the rain descended. The floods came. Why did he say these things? Why is he just, is he just giving us some parable that never happens? No, because Jesus knows. He knew then and he knows now. There's some trials of your faith that is going to come. I see people constantly get in the church when things are bad and they get back out when things are going good. And why do they do that? Because they're not built on the house of God, on the, on the foundation of Jesus Christ. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. And I don't want, but I, and I did the same thing. So don't and 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 it's the way it is. My my wife did the same thing when she was a teenager. But there comes a day, there comes a day when we decide. When I decided, I have been I have been building and it's falling. I've been building and the, everything I built upon was shaken and it would fall. I would build some more and it would the life would shake and it would fall again. And I finally got to the point. Whereas a 23 years old young man, I said, you know what? This is ridiculous. I'm tired of coming in and out of the church. Every time I got a problem and I'm, everything gets better and I come back out, I'm, I want to live for God. I'm tired of it. Amen. And not only am I tired of it, but I'm going to build my house to something better than just money. I'm trying to help us today. I'm trying to be your pastor. I'm going to build my house upon something besides just my career. All those things are necessary. And I'm not saying you don't keep your career. And you don't keep your money. And you keep your car and your home and all that kind of stuff. But I'm not going to build my life on that. I'm going to build my life upon the word and the will of God. I'm going to build my life upon the work of Jesus Christ. Because on that, on that foundation, in that setting, my house will stand. My house will stand. I'm not a doomsday person. I'm not. I, I do see what's coming, and I think most people here do as well. But Scripture says the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. But look, look, and, and I, oh, God, I wish I had, oh, I wish I had the, 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 the ear of every person in the world. But everyone that hears these sayings of mine, hears, hears his word. This is, this is God manifest in the flesh. Speaking to a crowd, and he said, You hear my words, build on them. That's what he said. Do it. Do it. Don't think about it. Don't play with it. Don't act like you are. Do it. Yeah. Don't, don't play this game of, see, well, look how good I am. Yeah. That's going to be tested. Yeah. That's going to be tested. Yep. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I had things go through my mind. One time I went to a church, and uh, no, they went to our, they came to our church, had these ladies come to our church, and they were so, they were so, um, uh, what do they call that? Where they like Pavlov's dogs, what do they call it? They're accustomed, they were, what do you call it? Conditioned. They were so conditioned to a certain experience in the, in the church. They were so conditioned to a certain scheme and, and theme and how things went, and, and they were so conditioned to when somebody prayed, this is how you act. And so, uh, I'm telling you a funny story. I probably shouldn't be making fun of things like this, but I, I, it, it a small church back then. It was like 30 of us, and, and I went up to pray for them. And, and the first one, I didn't catch on to it at first, but I went up to pray for them over on this side, and I'm like, in the name of Jesus. And the first one just goes, whoop, boom. And I'm like, oh, my word. <laughs> Hope she didn't hurt herself. <laughs> that was funny. Anyway, <laughs> I'm like, well... Two left, so I walk up and it's all together and I went to go pray for them and I said, in the name of Jesus. And the second one goes, whoop. I'm like, watch this. <laughs> so conditioned to the way things are supposed to be. I don't want to put on a show. 
I don't want to be a, a showboat. I don't want to be an actor. I don't want to be a facade. I don't want to be a fake pastor. I don't want to be a fake preacher. I want to be truthful with you and truthful with God. I want my life planted on the Word and the will of God. And I want to build my life upon the things that really matter. Because there is coming a test. There is coming a trial. Scripture says, And everyone that hears these things of mine, these things of mine and does them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man. A fool. Who wants to be called a fool? Which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. There is, there is not a different foundation for everyone. Everybody don't get their choice. When you want to build on a spiritual foundation, there is only one way you're going to do it, and is upon the Word of God, the will of God. And I'm telling you today that that Word, the thing that measures everything, the will that everything is measured off of, is the name of Jesus Christ, and He has set us a, a measuring stick, a measuring place that we can say, I'm not acting like the Lord, I better get back. I'm not acting like the Lord tells me to be. I better get back. And if you're in this building today and you're not acting the way the Lord calls for you to act, you need to get back. You need to find yourself back up on that foundation. And the only way you're going to do it is when you repent of your sins and you say, God, here I am again. Forgive me. Forgive me. Come on, church. I was praying the other day. I, I said I was, I was, I, I, was uh, I don't remember where I, I think I was in here praying. And I was, I was walking around just saying, God, and, and I, I'm just being honest with y'all. I want you to, I, I don't want, I'm not a showboat. You don't have to measure yourself and say, oh, Brother Castleberry is super spiritual. You listen to me. I'm as, I'm as real as you are. And I'm walking around this building praying and I'm thinking, but Garish, I said, God, I've done a lot of things wrong. <laughs> Anybody else done a lot of things wrong? I said, Lord, if I had to list them all over again and come back and say, Lord, here's my list again. But I got to praying and I began to realize <laughs> he already forgave me. He said, he said I, I forgave you. That's over. You don't have to come back for the things that's happened to you five, ten years from now or ten years ago. But what you've got to do is stay on the road today. And if you get a little off, get back on and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And don't look at people. Look, look to him. Look to the Lord. Look to your Savior. Quit looking at people. You're not here serving people. You're here serving Jesus Christ. You're not here for their approval. His approval is what I'm looking for. I'm building upon a firm foundation. And Jesus Christ is my Savior. Hallelujah. But we will, we will be tried. And if we're built on a good foundation, I'm, I'm hurrying. I, I, I read it first. I'm going to read the ERV version now. It says people can build on that foundation. Using gold, silver, jewels, wood, grass, or straw. Think about that. Gold, silver, jewels. That's precious things. Wood, grass, or straw. You can build whatever, however you want to build, you build it. Young people, children, let me tell you something. Your, your parents, uh, if, if, they're, if they're not foolish parents, and I mean that because there's a lot of foolish parents. If your parents are wise, they're going to correct you. Scripture says the Lord... The Lord corrects those that He loves. In fact, He calls those that He that He don't correct or don't want to be corrected. He calls them bastards and said they're not, they're not even part of His 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 family. And we, as as people, I'm telling you, we're going to experience the things of this world. It's going to affect us. But I am not going to let my mind and my heart be drawn into this fear and fear mongering and worry that's going to, the Bible says at the end time, people are going to, their hearts are going to be failing them for fear of what they see coming. I refuse. I'm not, I'm not just being bullheaded. I'm just saying I built my house on the rock. I've made up my mind. The Lord Jesus is the only foundation and my house is built on that. We're going to live for God. And, and I'll go another step forward. You and I need to recognize something. You're not saved. I've said this so many times in the recent past. And I'm going to keep saying it because you need to get it. You're not saved so you can be saved. You're saved so that you can give him glory in this world. <laughs> now, are you giving him glory? I'm just a pastor. I'm just a, you put me on whatever level you want to compare me to other people. I'm telling you what I feel led to say. I feel like the Lord is calling us and said, hey, what are you doing with your life? 
I'm not, I, are you, are, is he happy with the way we are building? Is he happy with the life that we have built? I'm telling you today that the Lord is looking at every one of us and he's saying, get it right, get it right, get it right. There's a test coming, there's a trial coming, there's fire coming. I'm telling you, you better get it right because at the end of days, at the end of this time, at the end of your life or whenever it may be, whenever it may be, if your life is not built on the foundation of Jesus Christ, it will crumble. There is a coming a day when all people will be tested. And I read it earlier. I'll read it again. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. A test is taking place today. I have no doubt a test is taking place today. In our world, I've got a lot of apps and things on my phone. And I think most of you probably are semi-aware of what's going on in Israel and around the world. I, I, I look at the State Department, you know, the war tracker, and there's all kinds of wars and rumors of wars all over the world. It's crazy. And, and I know some of you don't go as extensive as I do, and that's, that's fine. I don't, and that's, maybe that's why I'm, the, <laughs> that's what I'm supposed to be doing is warning you. <laughs> but uh, I, I see what is going on, and, and, and my, my life, I understand that, uh, excuse me, our lives are, are in turmoil in one way, shape, or another right now because of what's going on. I understand that. We're concerned. We're concerned. We, we was, the last few days, we were praying for Dave Robbins and his wife because they were in Israel on a, on a tour and, and all this stuff started happening. And we're like, pray for them. Why? Because, because we want them to come back home. Amen. They made it home. Thank God they made it home. They were in New Jersey early this morning. And, and uh, while New Jersey isn't... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that great it's not it's not Israel right now amen so so I'm, I'm trying to help us to see this church you don't have very many more opportunities just to do what I'm trying to tell you to do I don't know when this thing is going to bust wide open but it will there is coming a war scripture says it I believe it I believe with everything in fact he, he's proven his word so far true I have no doubt that it's coming soon right. the, the fig tree has budded we are in that, and there's no, I've heard people, I've heard people like uh, President, former President Trump, well, if I was in the office, this wouldn't happen. God's time clock's already started, and ain't no man going to stop it. He clicked it, not Trump, not Biden. They're not going to negotiate. Listen, they might, they might, in fact, it might, it's very possible that they come through this and have a peace treaty, and I don't see how, I don't see it coming right now. But it's possible. And that peace treaty will be rapidly followed after something else so dramatic that we're not going to understand it. Because the scripture says that there is coming a war, the sixth trumpet war, Revelation chapter 9, that a third of mankind will be killed. Right. Now, just because that happens does not mean everybody stops. Right. No, the world's going to keep going. Yeah. We're going to, we're, if we can, we're going to keep having church. Right. If we can do it. If we, if we, and the, the thing is, at that point, this is a test. My grandmother, my grandmother used to, uh, oh dear Lord, I'm way past. So let me hurry. My grandmother, I used to, when, I, when, I, when we started the church here, I had a grandmother that was, you need a grandmother. And, um, and one like mine. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I, I, would, I would go in through things and, and I didn't have anybody to talk to. I didn't have a friend in the ministry or anything. And I was just kind of this young punk out there starting a church, you know. And I would call my grandmother up and say, hey grandmama, how you doing? She goes, I'm doing fine, baby. How are you? I said, oh, I'm doing fine. What's going on? I said, oh, nothing, Grandmama. Now, you can tell me. Well, Grandmama, this is what's happened. Well, and this, it, I, I'll never forget this. I hear it ringing in my ears. Baby, it's just a test. <laughs> Baby, it's just a test. It's just a test. You'll get through this. This is just going to make you better because you need to, you know, God's got a plan for you. This is not, the church isn't going to stay this size and he needs to be able to trust you later. So you're going to be tested right now. Baby, it's just a test. Oh, I remember that voice. I remember those words. And I, now I look back and I realize this was just, that was just a test. And I'm trying to tell you now that there's a test coming. Not, we should not be full of fear, but we should recognize the importance of the day we have Whenever I realized my life was not on a firm foundation, it was, it was turned upside down. I'm getting emotional. I don't want to be, but I was, I was so messed up, so confused, so hurt, so sad. I was full of anger and bitterness and, and pain and frustration and, and just hate. And you name it, all the things, plus some probably. 
And I realized that my, my home was, I, 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 this is not going to work. This is not going to last. My marriage will fall apart. My kids will not know me. I might not even live through the next few years. It was that bad. And I mean that. You can ask my wife. I went to a church. And I don't remember what was preached. I don't think it matters what's preached. You hear me? You hear what I'm saying? We, don't, we need to give up the idea that we're going to go to church and be entertained. We need to quit thinking, oh, they're not going to play my song today. Or it's too hot or it's too cold. Or, Where's my chair? We don't have time for that. If you are here today and you realize that my life is not going to last, if the Lord was to come or trial to come today in my life, I would not want, you need to, you need to do what I did. I was sitting back there and I said, Lord, I don't know what else to do but fall upon your mercy and ask you, God, please forgive me. Help me to build my life different. I didn't know all the words. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to say it. I didn't have all the these and thous. I just knew I was broken and I was sitting on a broken foundation. And I knew that if I was to do right in the future, it would start because I, I relocated my life Amen. upon the rock called Jesus Christ. I want us to stand. I've got so much more to say. Scripture says, I'll, I'll throw a few more, just a few more thoughts and words in. James said, I, he, he, and this is so good. This is so good. It's so good. It's so important. Young people, when you're tested, when you're tried, old people, I don't know why I keep saying young people. People, all of us, when we're tested and we have a, a, a little problem at work or a little problem in our marriage and and I've been married 35 years today, and there's days where I'm like, hmm. Y'all know what I'm talking about. This marriage isn't perfect. None of them are. Oh, I want to just quit. I want to give up. I want to walk out. Whatever. I didn't. You know, you don't have your right mind. You're all emotional. But you stay, and you stick with it. This is why James, James wrote, he wrote it very, very important. My brethren counted all joy. When you fall into divers temptations. When you're tested on these little things. Oh, God's got an interest in me. God's working in my life. He wants, to, he wants me to look at. What, what are you going through? Let me, let me just put it to our lives. What are you going through? What have you been, Just think back a few moments or a few days ago. With that test, that trouble. That was a great opportunity. For you to check your life and say, am I built well? Is my home on the foundation of Jesus Christ? Have I used good material to build this home? That's our option. That's our option. I'm telling you today that as the time rolls on and this thing unfolds, the church is going to be full of people. And we, I'm not here to belittle them. In fact, I would never do that. And I'm telling anybody here today that I'm not here to hurt you or berate you. But I'm telling you, there's going to be people come into the house of God that are going to come to that realization. There's a fire going on outside. Trials, the day is approaching and my home is not built well. i got to change. And that day is going to come and it's going to surprise many people. And it's going to come and it's going to surprise many people. But you and I have the opportunity today, today, to, to look at your life and to know, am I built on a firm foundation? Let's just go, am, am I baptized in Jesus' name? Am I full of the Spirit of God? How do I know if I'm full of the Spirit of God? You know, a lot, the problem with a lot of houses is they're just a facade. Tornadoes come and they're gone. Hurricanes come and they're gone. They're wiped out. I remember years ago, we were selling fireworks. It was in my mind at that point, selling fireworks down here. Uh, raising money to put the ceiling in, I think. It was, it was, oh, y'all, you just, you missed those days. I, I, I hate y'all missed them. But anyway, because uh, we could have used y'all's help back then. But anyway, I was working down here at the fireworks stand, and I was on my way. I went to Dallas for something. I don't remember why. And, and there was a storm coming, and I knew the storm was coming, but I went to Dallas, and there was this, and it caught my eye because we're selling fireworks, and there's this big old fireworks warehouse on the side of the road up here on 35. And I'm like, whoa, big fireworks, big fireworks stand. Bigger than ours. That's big. Went to Dallas, storm came through, and I come back through the next day. That fireworks warehouse that was there, it had fallen down. The whole facade, it was just a facade. All that metal, big old warehouse was falling down, and behind it was a little mobile home. That's all it was. 
your life will be tested. And this might feel like a little awkward. I don't know, the spirit's not moving. And the music's not right. That doesn't matter. Quit, quit putting your faith in facades and, and gimmicks and games. You need to search your heart. You need to search your foundation. You need to search what you're building on, what you're building with. Is it going to last? Because I'm telling you now, I'm telling you, if you'll give me just a minute, I'm sorry, but just hear me. This war in Israel, it looks like it's the real thing. It looks like it's the real thing. I read this morning, even before church, I read where Iran is moving their equipment right up into Syria. And there's all they're waiting on is permission to go across. What's that tell us? The Bible says in, in, that in Revelation 9, it talks about that, that third world war. We call it third world war, six trumpet war, whatever you want to call it going to kill a third of mankind. The Bible says that that war is going to unleash before it starts. There's going to be four, four, uh, scripture, King James uses the word angels, but four spirits released from what they call the Euphrates River. That's what, that's what scripture says. And what that means is the four countries that border the Euphrates River, Iraq, Iran, Syria, and Turkey. Turkey is a NATO country, and so they're really struggling right now with what we what do we do? What do we do? Because they're about 90% Muslim. And so I'm not going to get into we've got a meeting today at 5 o'clock for those that want to come. We want you to be here, but at the same time, I'm not here. This is not fear. I just want you to understand how precarious. If, if you're going to check your foundation, you don't check it when the hurricane's blowing. You check it months and years ahead of time. You build it way ahead of time. If you're in this building today, if you've not been baptized in Jesus' name, start there. Repent of your sins. Repent. And I, when I talk about repentance, we, we say, well, we, we think it's, maybe it's just a natural thing for us. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Thank you, Lord. That was it. No, it's, it's realigning, realigning where you're pointed. And if it's in line with God, if you'll, if you'll turn your life and say, Lord, I've been going this way, but I'm going this way. And I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, repent. Confess your sins. It took me, it took me three months, honestly. <laughs> I was a big sinner. It took me three months to repent. God. <laughs> okay. But I found out later it doesn't take all that. I found out later it's just, Lord. From the heart, I'm, sin I'm full of sin. I've sinned so much. I've hurt so many people. I'm sorry. Repent, be filled with the Spirit, be baptized in Jesus' name. That will put your life on the foundation of Jesus Christ. I want us to close our eyes. I want us to pray right now, Lord Jesus. Come on, begin right now examining your life. Lord, I want to be built upon a foundation. It's firm, unmoving, un unmovable. I want to have my, my mind, my heart. I want to have peace, Lord God, in troubled times. I want to have peace, Lord God. I want to, that test that's coming. I don't, want to, I don't want to find out too late that it was, it was I built my life upon career or money or success or my name or fame or anything, but I want to build my life upon your word. I pray in the name of Jesus. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Keep praying. Pray, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's spend some time examining our lives right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, search my heart, search my mind. Lord God, you know what I do, you know what I don't do. You know where I go, you know what I look at, you know what I don't look at. You know, Lord, you know the opportunities I have to be in your word and your spirit. You know the opportunities that I have to be in other places. Lord, you know me better than I know myself. And I pray, dear God, that you would search my life. And please, I beg you, please forgive me of anything that I've done or, or anything that I am not doing, Lord God, that is not in your plan, I pray. Come on, pray like me if you need to. Keep praying. Come on, church, I'm trying to help somebody. Lord, search my heart, search my mind. Please forgive me. Come on, if it's your will to repent right now, just, just repeat after me. R lift your hands and talk to the Lord. Tell Him, Lord, I love you. Come on, in your own words, in your own way, Lord God.